This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aesop's Fables The Frogs Asking for a King Time was when the frogs were discontented because they had no one to rule over them. So they sent a deputation to Jupiter to ask him to give them a king. Jupiter, despising the folly of their request, cast a log into the pool where they lived, and said that that should be their king. The frogs were terrified at first by the splash, and scuttled away into the deepest parts of the pool. But by and by, when they saw that the log remained motionless, one by one, they ventured to the surface again, and before long, growing bolder, they began to feel such contempt for it that they even took to sitting upon it. Thinking that a king of that sort was an insult to their dignity, they sent to Jupiter a second time, and begged him to take away the sluggish king he had given them, and to give them another and a better one. Jupiter, annoyed at being pestered in this way, sent a stork to rule over them, who no sooner arrived among them than he began to catch and eat the frogs as fast as he could. End of The Frogs Asking for a King This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aesop's Fables The Olive Tree and the Fig Tree An olive tree taunted a fig tree with the loss of her leaves at a certain season of the year. You, she said, lose your leaves every autumn, and are bare till the spring, whereas I, as you see, remain green and flourished all the year round. Soon afterwards there came a heavy fall of snow, which settled on the leaves of the olive, so that she bent and broke under the weight. But the flakes fell harmlessly through the bare branches of the fig, which survived to bear many another crop. End of the Olive Tree and the Fig Tree This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Vicki Barber. Aesop's Fables The Lion and the Boar. One hot and thirsty day in the height of summer, a lion and a boar came down to a little spring at the same moment to drink. In a trice they were quarreling as to who should drink first. The quarrel soon became a fight, and they attacked one another with the utmost fury. Presently, stopping for a moment to take breath, they saw some vultures seated on a rock above, evidently waiting for one of them to be killed, when they would fly down and feed upon the carcass. The sight sobered them at once, and they made up their quarrel, saying, We had much better be friends than fight and be eaten by vultures. End of the Lion and the Boar This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Vicki Barber Aesop's Fables The Walnut Tree A walnut tree, which grew by the roadside, bore every year a plentiful crop of nuts. Everyone who passed by pelted its branches with sticks and stones in order to bring down the fruit, and the tree suffered severely. It is hard, it cried, that the very persons who enjoy my fruit should thus reward me with insults and blows. End of the Walnut Tree This is a LibriVox recording. 
All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Vicki Barber. Aesop's Fables The Man and the Lion. A man and a lion were companions on a journey, and in the course of conversation they began to boast about their prowess, and each claimed to be superior to the other in strength and courage. They were still arguing with some heat when they came to a crossroad where there was a statue of a man strangling a lion. There, said the man triumphantly, look at that. Doesn't that prove to you that we are stronger than you? Not so fast, my friend, said the lion. That is only your view of the case. If we lions could make statues, you may be sure that in most of them you would see the man underneath. There are two sides to every question. End of The Man and the Lion This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain, and for more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This recording is done by Kristin Luoma, GreenKRI.com. Aesop's Fables The Tortoise and the Eagle A tortoise, discontented with his lowly life, and envious of the birds he saw disporting themselves in the air, begged an eagle to teach him to fly. The eagle protested that it was idle for him to try, as nature had not provided him with wings. But the tortoise pressed him with entreaties and promises of treasure, insisting that it could only be a question of learning the craft of the air. So at length the eagle consented to do the best he could for him, and picked him up in his talons. Soaring with him to a great height in the sky, he then let him go, and the wretched tortoise fell headlong and was dashed to pieces on a rock. End of the Tortoise and the Eagle of Aesop's Fables This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aesop's Fables the Kid on the Housetop A kid climbed up on the roof of an outhouse, attracted by the grass and other things that grew in the thatch, and as he stood there browsing away, he caught sight of a wolf passing below, and jeered at him because he couldn't reach him. The wolf only looked up and said, I hear you, my young friend, but it is not you who mock me, but the roof on which you are standing. End of The Kid on the Housetop this is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aesop's Fables The Fox Without a Tail A fox once fell into a trap, and after a struggle managed to get free, but with the loss of his brush. He was then so much ashamed of his appearance that he thought life was not worth living unless he could persuade the other foxes to part with their tails also, and thus divert attention from his own loss. So he called a meeting of all the foxes and advised them to cut off their tails. They're ugly things anyhow, he said, and besides they're heavy and it's tiresome to be always carrying them about with you. But one of the other foxes said, My friend, if you hadn't lost your own tail, you wouldn't be so keen on getting us to cut off ours. End of The Fox Without a Tail This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Marion Brown, Toronto, Canada. Aesop's Fables the vain jackdaw. Jupiter announced that he intended to appoint a king over the birds, and named a day on which they were to appear before his throne, when he would select the most beautiful of them all to be their ruler. Wishing to look their best on the occasion, they repaired to the banks of a stream, 
where they busied themselves in washing and preening their feathers. The jackdaw was there along with the rest, and realized that with his ugly plumage he would have no chance of being chosen as he was. So he waited till they were all gone, and then picked up the most gaudy of the feathers that had dropped, and fastened them about his own body, with the result that he looked gayer than any of them. When the appointed day came, the birds assembled before Jupiter's throne, and after passing them in review, he was about to make the jackdaw king, when all the rest set upon the king-elect, stripped him of his borrowed plumes, and exposed him for the jackdaw that he was. End of The Vain Jackdaw This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aesop's Fables The Traveller and His Dog A traveller was about to start on a journey, and said to his dog, who was stretching himself by the door, Come, what are you yawning for? Hurry up and get ready. I mean you to go with me. But the dog merely wagged his tail and said quietly, I'm ready, master. It's you I'm waiting for. End of The Traveller and His Dog This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aesop's Fables The Shipwrecked Man and the Sea A shipwrecked man, cast up on the beach, fell asleep after his struggle with the waves. When he woke up, he bitterly reproached the sea for its treachery in enticing men with its smooth and smiling surface, and then, when they were well embarked, turning in fury upon them and sending both ship and sailors to destruction. The sea arose in the form of a woman, and replied, Lay not the blame upon me, O sailor, but on the winds. By nature I am as calm and safe as the land itself. But the winds fall upon me with their gusts and gales, and lash me into a fury that is not natural to me. End of The Shipwrecked Man and the Sea This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Gitu Milwani Aesop's Fables the wild boar and the fox. A wild boar was engaged in whetting his tusks upon the trunk of a tree in the forest when the fox came by, and, seeing what he was at, said to him, Why are you doing that, pray? The huntsmen are not out today, and there are no other dangers at hand that I can see. True, my friend, replied the boar, but the instant my life is in danger, I shall need to use my tusks. There'll be no time to sharpen them then. End of The Wild Boar and the Fox This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Patty McCoy in Hudson, Colorado. Aesop's Fables Mercury and the Sculpture Mercury was very anxious to know in what estimation he was held by mankind, so he disguised himself as a man and walked into a sculptor's studio, where there were a number of statues finished and ready for sale. Seeing a statue of Jupiter among the rest, he inquired the price of it. A crown, said the sculptor. Is that all? said he laughing and pointing to one of juno how much is that one that was the reply is half a crown and how much might you be wanting for that one over there now he continued pointing to a statue of himself that one said the sculptor oh i'll throw him in for nothing if you'll buy the other two end of mercury and the sculptor This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Patty McCoy in Hudson, Colorado. Aesop's Fables The Fawn and His Mother A hind said to her fawn, who was now well grown and strong, 
My son, nature has given you a powerful body and a stout pair of horns, and I can't think why you are such a coward as to run away from the hounds. Just then they both heard the sound of a pack in full cry, but at a considerable distance. You stay where you are, said the hind, never mind me, and with that she ran off as fast as her legs could carry her. End of The Fawn and His Mother This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Patty McCoy in Hudson, Colorado. Aesop's Fables The Fox and the Lion A fox who had never seen a lion one day met one and was so terrified at the sight of him that he was ready to die with fear. After a time he met him again, and was still rather frightened, but not nearly so much as he had been when he met him first. But when he saw him for the third time, he was so far from being afraid that he went up to him and began to talk to him as if he had known him all his life. End of The Fox and the Lion This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, and to find out how to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Marion Brown, Toronto, Canada. Aesop's Fables, The Eagle and His Captor A man once caught an eagle, and after clipping his wings, turned him loose among the fowls in his hen-house, where he moped in a corner, looking very dejected and forlorn. After a while his captor was glad enough to sell him to a neighbor, who took him home and let his wings grow again. As soon as he had recovered the use of them, the eagle flew out and caught a hare, which he brought home and presented to his benefactor. A fox observed this, and said to the eagle, don't waste your gifts on him. Go and give them to the man who first caught you. Make him your friend, then perhaps he won't catch you and clip your wings a second time. The End of The Eagle and His Captor This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aesop's Fables The Blacksmith and His Dog A blacksmith had a little dog, which used to sleep when his master was at work, but was very wide awake indeed when it was time for meals. One day his master pretended to be disgruntled at this, and when he had thrown him a bone as usual, he said, What on earth is the good of a lazy cur like you? When I am hammering away at my anvil, you just curl up and go to sleep. But no sooner do I stop for a mouthful of food than you wake up and wag your tail to be fed. Those who will not work deserve to starve. End of The Blacksmith and His Dog This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Christine Dewar the Nonasasa, Florida. Aesop's Fables The Stag at the Pool A thirsty stag went down to a pool to drink. As he bent over the surface, he saw his own reflection in the water, and was struck with admiration for his fine spreading antlers. But at the same time he felt nothing but disgust for the weakness and slenderness of his legs. While he stood there looking at himself, he was seen and attacked by a lion. But in the chase which ensued, he soon drew away from his pursuer, and kept his lead as long as the ground over which he ran was open and free of trees. But coming presently to a wood, he was caught by his antlers in the branches, and fell a victim to the teeth and claws of his enemy. "'Woe is me!' he cried with his last breath. "'I despised my legs, which might have saved my life, but I gloried in my horns, and they have proved my ruin. What is worth most 
is often valued least. End of the Stag at the Pool This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aesop's Fables The Dog and the Shadow A dog was crossing a plank bridge over a stream with a piece of meat in his mouth, when he happened to see his own reflection in the water. He thought it was another dog, with a piece of meat twice as big. So he let go his own, and flew at the other dog, to get the larger piece. But, of course, all that happened was that he got neither, for one was only a shadow, and the other was carried away by the current. End of The Dog and the Shadow This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Gitu Melwani. Aesop's Fables Mercury and the Tradesman When Jupiter was creating man, he told Mercury to make an infusion of lies, and to add a little of it to all the other ingredients which went into the making of the tradesman. Mercury did so and introduced an equal amount into each in turn, the tallow chandler, the green grocer, and the haberdasher and all, till he came to the horse-dealer, who was last on the list, when, finding that he had a quantity of the infusion still left, he put it all into him. This is why all tradesmen lie more or less, but they none of them lie like the horse-dealer. End of Mercury and the Tradesman This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Christine Dewar, Thanona Sassa, Florida. Aesop's Fables The Mice and the Weasels There was a war between the mice and the weasels, in which the mice always got the worst of it numbers of them being killed and eaten by the weasels. So they called a council of war, in which an old mouse got up and said, It's no wonder we are always beaten, for we have no generals to plan our battles and direct our movements in the field. Acting on his advice, they chose the biggest mice to be their leaders, and these, in order to be distinguished from the rank and file, provided themselves with helmets bearing large plumes of straw. They then led out the mice to battle, confident of victory. But they were defeated as usual, and were soon scampering as fast as they could to their holes. All made their way to safety without difficulty, except the leaders, who were so hampered by the badges of their rank that they could not get into their holes, and fell easy victims to their pursuers. Greatness carries its own penalties. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Christine Dewar, Thanona Sassa, Florida. Aesop's Fables The Peacock and Juno The peacock was greatly discontented because he had not a beautiful voice like the nightingale and he went and complained to Juno about it. The nightingale's song, he said, is the envy of all the birds. But whenever I utter a sound, I become a laughing-stock. The goddess tried to console him by saying, You have not, it is true, the power of song. But then you far excel all the rest in beauty. Your neck flashes like the emerald, and your splendid tail is a marvel of gorgeous color. But the peacock was not appeased. What is the use, he said, of being beautiful with a voice like mine? Then Juno replied, with a shade of sternness in her tones, Fate has allotted to all their destined gifts. To yourself, beauty. To the eagle, strength. To the nightingale, song. And so on to all the rest in their degree. But you alone are dissatisfied with your portion. Make then no more complaints, for if your present wish were granted, 
you would quickly find cause for fresh discontent. End of the Peacock and Juno This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aesop's Fables The Bear and the Fox A bear was once bragging about his generous feelings, and saying how refined he was compared with other animals. There is, in fact, a tradition that a bear will never touch a dead body. A fox, who heard him talking in this strain, smiled and said, My friend, when you are hungry, I only wish you would confine your attention to the dead and leave the living alone. A hypocrite deceives no one but himself. End of The Bear and the Fox This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aesop's Fables The Ass and the Old Peasant An old peasant was sitting in a meadow watching his ass, which was grazing close by, when all of a sudden he caught sight of armed men stealthily approaching. He jumped up in a moment and begged the ass to fly with him as fast as he could, or else, said he, we shall both be captured by the enemy. But the ass just looked round lazily and said, And if so, do you think they'll make me carry heavier loads than I have to now? No, said his master. Oh, well then, said the ass, I don't mind if they do take me, for I shan't be any worse off. End of The Ass and the Old Peasant This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aesop's Fables The Ox and the Frog Two little frogs were playing about at the edge of a pool when an ox came down to the water to drink, and by accident trod on one of them and crushed the life out of him. When the old frog missed him, she asked his brother where he was. "'He is dead, mother,' said the little frog. "'An enormous big creature with four legs came to our pool this morning and trampled him down in the mud.' "'Enormous, was he? Was he as big as this?' said the frog, puffing herself out to look as big as possible. "'Oh, yes, much bigger,' was the answer. The frog puffed herself out still more. "'Was he as big as this?' said she. "'Oh, yes, yes, mother, much bigger,' said the little frog. And yet again she puffed and puffed herself out till she was almost as round as a ball. "'As big as—' she began, but then she burst. End of The Ox and the frog.